Hey, I'm April, and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another travel video. This one is about planning Disney World. Yay, where magic is. So, I'm just going to talk you through a few things that we did for our trip and some things that you can change but overall some things that like you should do no matter what you're doing for Disney. For Disney there's a lot of travel agents that are actually hired through Disney to give you lower discounted rates. So you can look them up. There's It's a Small World is one of them and that's the one we use but there's lots of them out there and they're all you don't pay them anything because Disney pays them so it's just another way to get like a cheaper room and then they also kind of walk you through everything. So if there's anything you're confused about and you don't want to just keep doing customer service through Disney and you want like a straight answer, you can use that and then they'll give you a lot of help for that too. Um, another thing to look at is if you're going to stay on or off property. I've always stayed on just because I don't want to have to rent a car and I don't want to have to get myself to and from the airport. They have the buses, they do it all for you. If you bring luggage, they sh ship you these little um, little things to put on your luggage and it has like where you're staying. So that's something to think about. So save a little bit of money staying off property. However, if you want to do a dining plan, you cannot do it that way. Also, you end up having to pay for your wristbands, which is your all your money is on it, everything like that. So you lose something there. And then you can't get your stuff sent to your room if you stay off property. So it's like the little luxuries that's like of Disney. So if you plan on just being in Disney always and never leaving it, I recommend staying on property. They have three different levels of um, hotel rooms. What I've noticed is that for most of them, it just like comes down to what you want out of a room like your room size is different and then like your bathroom and amenities so it's just like a normal how you would expect like maybe like a motel kind of thing would be their discounted but with a theme and then their <laughs> their middle moderate ones are like what you expect out of just like a normal like a renaissance kind of thing but with a theme and like you're in a jungle for like your caribbean and then the other ones are like the giraffes come up to your room i'm pretty sure like you can see them out your window. That's the animal one, which is just amazing. But I've never stayed there, so I don't know. But um, you're looking at like 200 per night is the only thing for the moderately. So the first thing you need is to download the app. It's a Disney World app. You can look through wait times for everything. It will have all your plans on the app. So that's the most important thing for you to have. This is good for if you're staying on or off property. If you do the dining package and you have any sit down restaurants, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and book your reservations on this app. You can go through it and you can look at it and be like, you can go through the menus too. So you can be like, okay, I'm gonna be here and it has to accept the dining package plan that I have. So you click the little filters and you're like, yes, yes, yes. And then you, <laughs> You scroll through them and you can look at the menus and see what you like and what the prices are because they have it all there. So if you have a dining package with the prices, you kind of want to pick something that's more expensive because your goal is to eat more expensive than what you actually paid for. If you don't have a dining plan but you want to have a nice sit down restaurant, the prices are important because you can see what's cheaper. Um, you can look at some vlogs to see kind of what other people thought of those restaurants to see if they're outdated or if it's like worth it. Like a lot of places that I read said that the, um, the Be Our Guest one's not really worth it because it takes two of your dining plans away. So we decided not to do that. Okay, um, so if you're staying on property, you can reserve your um, fast passes up to 60 days before you show up. You need to do it then, like right off the bat because they do run out. And you get to do three per day per park. Like your advanced ones have to be in the same park. So, day one, Animal Kingdom, book all of them. Day two, maybe you go to Magic Kingdom, book your three in there, all of that fun stuff. Um, it's also important to kind of look before you book those what the most, like the highest wait times are 
and which rides have the highest wait times. You don't want to waste your fast pass on something that has like a 30 minute tops wait. You want to go for the big ticket item that's like the later it will be the Star Wars ones, but right now it's the um, Avatar. There's two Avatar rides. One has like a 200 something minute wait always. It's ridiculous. The other one is like more like 160, 130, but it's still a lot. You don't want to have to just actually wait in that line. So if you go ahead and book those pass passes now, it'll be a lot easier on you and way less time in a line. You need it. Leave some comments down below if there's anything else you have questions about or if you've been to Disney more recently and you're like, I love this, just let us know. Let us know what you love about everything Disney World. Okay, bye. <laughs>